So after the process of setting up all of your products and materials has been completed and all of your recipes and operations have been imported or created for your products, the next step is all about getting your stock sorted. So before you can actually go live with Katana as a platform, everything comes down to getting your stock counts up to date before you start doing everything else that uh, Katana is designed to do. Now, prior to even kicking off uh, Katana in general, um, there will be uh, other things you might need to do as well, such as um, connecting your e-commerce stores or finishing building out your integrations or whatever it is that you might need. Those types of things might have to be, be done as well prior to going live. But the very most basic thing that has to be dealt with before going live with Katana and using it regularly is your final stock take. And so the final stock take is something we will get into when we go through the uh, full getting started guide and getting your data into Katana. But um, most importantly is uh, we're going to cover uh, the stock related items in this video series, which will talk specifically about everything that's related to stock. So let's go ahead and get give a quick refresher on uh, stock in general. And the best place to start off with this is the settings page under the locations category. Now remember, if your business runs in multiple places, then you're going to have stock in multiple places where it's needed to be tracked. And to really unlock a lot of the stock functions and capabilities, um, adding locations which will create additional stock locations, additional manufacturing locations, additional sales locations, um, is something that uh, we can do here. And for the sake of this video series, we'll go ahead and make a secondary location. And uh, our secondary location, we will call it uh, Fulfillment. Add a legal name if you wish, um, also an address. We will skip that for the time being. I will remove the make option and I'll keep the buy option activated. There are some cases that I might sell a product that I am reselling, but I send it to my fulfillment location prior to dispatch, um, even if I order directly from a supplier. So that could be a general use case. Uh, so what is this doing? It's adding two locations for stock in our Katana account. And we'll do this first and head on over to the stock screen where new things are starting to appear. Now the stock screen has these additional tabs up here, including stock adjustments and stock transfers. And we'll talk more about those as we get deeper into the series. Uh, but most important thing is let's go ahead and talk about what we're seeing in front of us on this stock screen. Now, stock in general, what is it? Stock is uh, the relation of quantities of items that you have available in your inventory is the most basic understanding. If you have something in your pantry, you have something in stock. You're keeping it in stock, more or less. And you always are using this all in everyday life. You know, you walk into the kitchen, you open up the drawer, do you have the things you need to, if you, do you have eggs in the fridge to make a fried egg sandwich? Yes or no. And if you don't, you have to go buy more eggs. It's that simple, just as if you were a manufacturing company, you need to see, do you have the materials that you need to make the products that you want to sell? And um, this is where all of that intelligence is gathered in a central location. And in this location, there's many different elements that you see available to you, um, which are very comprehensive. And, uh, and uh, we'll go through these. So firstly, just want to say that um, we have all of your items listed in a single view. You can have all of just your products listed in a single view or also just your materials listed in a single view. And all of these views 
are pretty much exactly the same with the exception of um, the fact that products are typically have a make option associated with them and materials have a buy option associated with them. And within these different columns, you can see uh, the different titles, the name, which we've talked about, which derives from the item cards, the variant code in SKUs, which we've discussed uh, many times how important they are. And SKUs, as mentioned earlier, pay a, play a vital role, and I won't stop repeating it, they play a vital role in uh, inventory tracking. So those will appear here as well. Categories. So as we mentioned earlier with categories, you can use it to help classify your products. And this is one of those locations where that product classification becomes evident because on your stock page, you can use the different types of filters. If you've got hundreds of products, filters come in very handy if you wanna narrow down certain things you wanna look at. Maybe I only wanna look at tables. I can choose tables and shortlist all of my tables. Um, that's very handy too. You can look up things by variant code or SKU, by name, also by the supplier. So in our case, I want to see all of the items that I buy from my paint supplier. Here we have something called average cost. And average cost is um, the costing methodology in Katana. And we'll dedicate a video to that as well. Value in stock, the in stock quantity, which is how much of that particular item do you physically have on hand right now? Expected quantities. Now, expected quantities in their most basic relationship is that um, if you're buying something, a material, from a supplier, you create a document called a purchase order. If that item is on an open purchase order with a supplier who's sending it to you, then that quantity of that item is expected. If, it's ex if it is expected, it means it's going to be on its way to your stock at some point. So that's how the expected quantities work for materials, because they usually have a relationship with purchase orders. With products though, products can also have an expected quantity. And that can derive from two different things. That can derive from a manufacturing order, in case it's something that you're making, meaning that I took a product, I put it on a manufacturing order, and it is expected to be completed uh, and available to stock at some point, but it just hasn't been made yet, but it's on its way. Uh, but also manu uh, manufactured goods, which have the tick box, which we covered on the product side um, of that you buy them, those can also create an expected quantity because the product itself is coming in from a supplier on a purchase order. So that's what expected is all about. What is coming, either from POs or from manufacturing orders. Commit, committed quantities is a terminology that is saying this product has been committed to something meaning it's basically spoken, spoken for. And um, a sales order is what a customer is buying from you. In that sales order, there's an item, a product, and there's a quantity of that product. Well, if that item exists on a sales order and there's a quantity of it, then that one quantity on a sales order is generating a commitment. A commitment of that product from inventory to a customer on a sales order. So in the case of products, you commit product to sales because you sell products. Um, and that is the number of products that are presently committed but have not been sent. If they have been sent, then what happens is the in-stock quantity will drop and the committed will drop. In the case of materials, you'll find here, you can also have a committed quantity of those materials. Now, when a material is committed, in Katana's terminology, a material is committed to manufacturing. Because if you remember, 
materials under katana definition are items that you don't sell, but you use in the manufacturing process. You buy them and use them. You don't sell them. So in katana terminology, committing a material means committing that material item to a manufacturing order. So the product that's being made is committing the material to manufacturing. If that material exists on the ingredient line of a manufacturing order, it will be the material itself, the quantity. If it's on an open manufacturing order, it's committed. Whenever the manufacturing order is completed or the material is used in the manufacturing process, then the commitment drops because it's no longer being needed, it's been used, and also the in-stock quantity drops. So there is this relationship there. And over here is what we have called the reorder point. And the reorder point, we have a nice document as well, which you can read in our knowledge base um, by checking this tick box up here and reading more about it, of course. But um, in short, what is a reorder point? The most simplified example of a reorder point that I can give in terms of definition is it is literally the lowest point a lowest quantity of stock you should have for any item. So if you hit your reorder point, then that's your minimum stock quantity that you could, that you should have in stock and you need to order something. So it's basically a measure of a certain quantity. So if my reorder point is three, the moment that my inventory hits three units in stock, I should buy something um, to replenish that stock because it takes time, let's say for materials, if you use it and you hit the position number three, it takes time to buy those materials in because there's a lead time associated and the material that you have on hand might be depleted before the arrival of the next purchase order with that material coming into inventory. So people set reorder points based on, uh, for, for purchasing, people set reorder points based on like the uh, typical consumption that they have. And whenever they hit a certain moment, that's the right moment to order. So that way you have, so as, as that draws down while the order is coming in, then you replenish it just at the right time. So you never actually run out of the stock you need, but you're operating as optimally as possible. And uh, so it's a really big topic and um, you can set those reorder points in Katana and those kind of work into the calculation. Now going deeper, to the far right, this is one of the most powerful fields you would use in Katana on the stock page. And it's probably the one you will use the most as a user of the system. It's called the missing or excess column. Now for Katana, what does the missing or excess column actually mean? Now that we've gone through what does in stock, expected, committed, and reorder point means, there's a mathematical formula that correlates to all of those elements. And that mathematical formula is your in-stock quantity plus what is expected to arrive to stock. In the case of manufacturing, in the case of products, it's manufacturing orders. In the case of materials, it's purchase orders. H minus how much is committed so you've got the current amount in, on hand, you've got the amount coming in, minus the demand for that amount, which is the committed quantity, minus your reorder point. Reorder point generates its own commitments when it is set. That's why it's set as the reorder point or the minimum stock level in this case, depending on what terminology you like to use, it's more or less the same. And that is subtracted from the from the amount which will give you either a missing or excess quantity now in stock quantity plus expected minus committed minus reorder point equals missing or excess amount now if you are missing inventory it means that your commitments plus reorder point exceeds anything that you have currently in stock or any or anything that is presently on its way and this is when you have a problem this is when you need to make a decision 
So if the demand for a product or the demand for a material exceeds what's coming in and what's currently available, then it will turn red and go negative. And so you can use the filters on the stock page to put in a hyphen to shortlist all of the missing items that you need to either buy or manufacture. So this is just one element and probably the most important element of the stock screen in its general format.